Here we go with another episode of Rethink Real Estate, and Chris is back today, and we're talking about SEO and the adaption of AI through Google Suite. Um, we obviously talk a little bit about YouTube and how that plays into it as well, but we constantly try and keep it a little bit fresh with the AI stuff. AI, as I expressed at the beginning of this episode, is still really confusing to me and how it's going to play its role and the different silos that are there that one doesn't speak to the other and so on and so forth. Um, but then- uh, you know, I speak about Callista, who's part of our team as well, is that she is out there doing an MBA in in AI um, through another company so that we can understand and how to adapt it to certain portions of the business. But Chris is more specifically talking about the distinct opportunity that there is within Google and the SEO. He says in the podcast that he doesn't believe that there's been an SEO opportunity to gamify it like he like what he's talking about or game it um, since 2010. So it could be some really good opportunities out there at the moment for those that want to lean into a little bit of difference when it comes to capturing that inbound nature or exposing your business. Definitely worth a listen. Hopefully it helps. Welcome to Rethink Real Estate. My name is Ben Brady, and this is a real estate podcast aimed to deliver sales strategies, marketing tips, and business insights from industry experts and myself to build a listing-focused business for the future. Let's get into it. Hey, mate. Hello, sir. Question for you about AI for the audience as well. I just got an email from Microsoft that says Copilot, and... It's their new AI that sort of helps with basically it's just AI for your computer essentially or for your, sorry, for your Microsoft Microsoft suite of apps, right? Yep. There's a part of me that loves the idea of this, but then there's a part of me that doesn't like in the sense that like I could just ask that anything to do with my computer. Like today I had to write an email to my accountant and I had to tell them what was in the folder and all the stuff that I needed to get there. Like if I could say to the AI, can you generate an email telling them what's in this folder? And like it drafts it up. Like that's amazing. If it could actually look into the folder, see what the headings of each thing are, and then draft it, draft the email, that'd be amazing. Um, Which got me thinking, right? You want to start an AI startup and get venture capital money. Is that, is that where we're going? No, (laughs) obviously, but still no. Um, there's a great deal of stuff that Callista is doing with AI though. Like she's going through and doing an AI MBA through sections is the company. And I like, I'm really looking forward to having some integration of the stuff. Like we're going to do it in our online trainings. Like there's an avatar that she sent me the other day of a dude doing training. And like, and I'm like, that's, that's a real guy standing in front of a camera. She's like, it's not, he literally (laughs) just types it in. I'm like, Oh, that's amazing. Um, by the way, Chris and I are not avatars. We're real. Um, Kind of, kind of, (laughs) but where I'm going with this is that that got me really excited about my day-to-day from an administration perspective because I've never been able to buy into the virtual assistants that like help you do certain, like it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't um, really get me excited to have to teach somebody and what do I actually use them for the efficiencies and whatever it is, but it would get me excited if somebody had an AI for my entire real estate um, like a, like a, an AI bot or whatever they call them that, that scours through my database to give me more information about when people might be selling their interactions, you know, looking different things up, show me people that are in this area. Like I, or maybe it might be, I might be thinking about more of an AI thing that scours real estate data in general that might be able to like hone things down. I know that today we're talking about AI and SEO and all of that type of stuff, but have you, have you seen like that personal assistant AI for anything real estate related? or should I give this whole um, whatever they call it on Microsoft suite and uh, like a try? Um, Microsoft, like I, I would definitely give it a try. I would see what it see what it entails. I don't know much about the co-pilot situation. Um, so I mean, I would I would dive into it and just see if it serves any benefit. It reminds me of like the way they talk about it. Uh, it reminds me, do you remember back in the day when you used to get like a little paper clip in your like Microsoft Word and it would like pop uh, up and it would give you like, it would dance around and stuff. Look it up. It's a funny little gif and oh, i have stuff seen like that. i remember yeah. that thing and then yeah. you could change them from paper clips to yeah. other things and yeah. yeah yeah it was like i forgot his name it was like mr clip or something yeah whatever oh um, that's really original it, that's what that's what it reminds me of is like this is like gonna be able to ha- help me through these things i think we're a hundred percent on the path of like there's an ai built into every machine um every pc every windows or apple computer or anything like that and so 
um, and that'll be able to go through your entire document list and find things that you're looking for or be able to source notes or anything like that or be able to source meetings that you talked about and kind of do a lot of the work for us, which is pretty cool because it'll free us up for more of the creative activities that I think we're really good at. Um, and so I think that's definitely on the horizon. Um, which well, I think cool. that, but, but, but I think that there's a part of this that, and maybe I'm getting too detailed into this. Like I, I, I think about these things very differently, well, not very differently. I think about them very um, separate in the sense that, or maybe it's a little convoluted is that I don't want to sign up for Microsoft because I've got an Apple computer, but I run Microsoft apps. Yep. So therefore it's only then restricted to the Microsoft apps, the AI portion of it and not the entire computer. So far, so, so far, like so far, like, yeah, like that's the part where like, cause I know that, that Apple have done a deal with open AI, which obviously is the same as Michael Microsoft as well, where essentially they're going to build that into Siri but then will Siri have access to those? App? Like, like it's just, I think it's too young and confusing yeah. still. Uh, well, I mean, it'd be awesome if AI breaks down that kind of walled garden that Apple has put up and that Microsoft put up on their own stuff as well. But I mean, that would be amazing if we can have some kind of app that sits on our phone, that sits on our computer, whether we're using an Apple iPhone or we're using a PC and then it goes over to an iPad, like that would be the perfect kind of world at that point. Uh, whether we're using, you know, Alexa in our, in our kitchen, yeah. uh, that's Amazon. And now all of a sudden they're all talking to each other because of um, having one open AI or whatever company comes in and kind of breaks that walled garden up. That would be amazing. That'd be tremendous. It's, tremendous. Yeah. I, I still think that there's just this element of like right now it bothers the shit out of me, the whole Google suite, Microsoft suite, Sweet Apple sweet smart home differentiate. Like I honestly and, think that people still, it's going to be too siloed Chris still for a very long time for it to make like unbelievable sense. Well, and that's the, that's the crazy thing about the AI stuff is the AI is becoming pretty siloed as well because all these companies are basically doing this race to the moon. If you, if you think about it, like, um, you know, the Russians and USA and all that. Remember about the race and the race to the moon when everybody lands, tried to land on the moon first and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. basically what's happening with AI right now. Australia you know? wasn't in, Australia wasn't in that race. So <laughs> no, you guys are building the internet or whatever you guys are doing <laughs> at the time. So, uh, so um, yeah, that, that's kind of what, what's happening in the AI world right now is where you're having this giant race where Google has their own AI and Microsoft has their own AI and then there's open AI and then there's all these, all these different companies are trying to basically race to be the biggest and the best um, because there's going to be a tremendous future when it comes to this. And I think we're kind of seeing that already with the way Google's treating um, AI and, and just how good it, that's becoming when it comes to search engine results and everything like that. Yeah. Well, again, that segues us into how AI and SEO, obviously with Google being the SEO gods um, yep. and then Meta being the the social media advertising element. But I guess that today we're talking about AI and SEO. Give us an update on that field because I'm, I'm vastly curious because at the end of the day, is that one of those siloed things where Google is the place that you still go? Yeah. Um, but OpenAI is really the AI that has really dominated the AI industry through some of its partnerships. But do you think like with the SEO side of people's businesses and the advertising side of people's businesses, they're going to be forced to come back to the Google one? So this is where it's getting fun right now. Google's still obviously the primary search engine of choice for 99% of people. If, if you accidentally search somewhere else on Bing or something like that, most of the time you try to jump back over to Google and you try to search on Google as fast as possible because you're like, man, how did I get over to DuckDuckGo or Google, like Bing or whatever to search on that stuff like that. Um, now, when you search on Google, you're now seeing this AI description at the top. Uh, every time you search, and I'm sure you've searched and you've seen the same thing, like, and it could be anything. It could say, what's the real estate market like? And all of a sudden, it's giving you this generative AI, um, basically where it's scouring all the search results and then delivering a synopsis right at the top uh, instead of having you go click on these other websites, which one is taking away traffic from a lot of pages um, because people are finding what they perceive as the real answer directly at the top um, and they're not actually going anywhere else. They're not leaving Google. Uh, and then two, um, it is now giving Google a new avenue to now place ads. And they just came out this last week or uh, whatever we're recording this. Um, so they came out and said um, that they are now going to start placing or experimenting with ad placements inside of that search, um, that generative AI spot um, in that standpoint, which I think is going to be a huge, huge opportunity for real estate. One so of the dumb, this, dumb, yeah. dumb, this down, dumb this down for me, dumb this down for me. I'm lost. What do yep. you mean? So hang on. I Google something. Yep. 
So say you Google, how was the real estate market in uh, Seattle, Washington? Got it, got it. Yep. Gives you the generative AI right at the top. It gives you- Yeah, it's got like the little star or like what- Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the little star, the little AI star, and it gives you a whole synopsis. So they're still going to give that synopsis. And then right below that or somewhere in the middle, maybe at the top, they haven't told exactly where that placement's going to be, but people are going to be able to run ads and put their company directly in that. In that spot, oh. and that spot's oh, in, got a lot in, of sorry, power. In the right in now. the in the verbiage, or in, in somewhere. I, so we don't know yet. We we don't know where it's going to come. Uh, in, in like here's the been, answer. Here's the answer. The real estate marketplace in Gig Harbor in Washington is better. Da da. If for further information, reach out to uh, Chris Cochran, it, um, the yep. local realtor in that market. Maybe exactly. Yep. Ugh, so, wow. Something like that. So they are going to be experimenting now with putting placements in that in that standpoint. They'll I probably think, they'll probably put something like here's a list of three realtors that you should communicate with about that market, so correct. that then they can sell multiple spots. Yeah. Pro- okay. Gotcha. Something. Yeah. Because on their search ads, they would do three at the top, and then they do some at the bottom, and they do some on the second page and stuff like that. It'll depend. Google always does their stuff about how good your content is, how good your website is, and they take into account their your ad placement rankings and everything like that. So if you can gamify that situation a little bit and you can get yourself to the top of whatever that generative AI is going for, whether it's spending more money or whatever it is, I think that's actually going to be a really, really, really powerful place to place ads. Um, so maybe, well, so maybe, maybe where we need to try it, and again, you're obviously already going there, but um, but yep. maybe where we need to try it is that anybody that enters the words auction into the in into yep. into that SEO, maybe we need to try and see what it would cost us to try and be in the fold of that comment. Now, again, we've got to be careful here because, like anything, is that you know our marketplace is the entire or entirety of North America. Yep. Whereas like maybe we need to make sure that we select our individual markets where we've had the success, just like an agent needs to be selective of maybe, how do you target that? Is it zip codes? Is it what? It- yeah. So you could, you could target, usually what you're targeting by is keywords. And so right. it could be, you know, 98335 real estate. It could be Gig Harbor real estate. It could be all these different things that you can now put in there uh, and you can do it from that standpoint. So I'm not exactly sure. And nobody is outside of the Google reps and Google techs. Um, who are building this and, and editing this placement on how exactly this is going to work. I just want to make sure that all the real estate agents who are in tune with the podcast, that they understand that this is on the horizon. And I would put this yeah. into your 2025 planning. Like I would say, spend some time because I, I think just like uh, back in the day, if you remember when Google business was going on and you could have the map and you could have the star ratings, you could Absolutely. put yourself at the top of that with with ads and if you could do that 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 was winning and you can organically get to the top as well so the first people who got to the top organically dominated they absolutely mm. dominated because they were the first result every time someone typed in Seattle real estate and all of a sudden they were the top person because they had 76 reviews or something like that at a five star rating and they were the top and they got all the clicks at that point and they were just getting all this organic inbound traffic if now you could do that from uh, an inbound perspective by just running a couple dollars uh, per per day or whatever per click, whatever it is, uh, whatever it's going to cost. If you can run that inside of this generative AI, I think this is going to win. It's right at the top of the entire search result. It looks like Google is feeding you the answer that you're looking for. Uh, it's providing good content in there most of the time. Like it gives you a quick, quick synopsis without having to go to a slow website or you know a crappy website that has a bunch of images and all that stuff. Um, so I think it's just going to be a great avenue for realtors to win pretty early. Well, I think that there's another part. Do you know the other day, Chris, I want to I want to segue across to YouTube. We had a guest on the podcast where his podcast will be coming up. His name's Sam. Um, and uh, Sam's out of uh, Tampa, Florida. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that he enlightened me to was actually off the episode that I really wanted to make mention on one of the podcasts is that the thing that, and this is what led me to this, Google owns YouTube. Right? 100%. Yep. So, so there is your suite SEO, and then also the YouTube side of things from a perspective of one, and then the other one is Meta, the the Meta suite of things. Yep. Outside of that, outside of that, like uh, again, unless you're trying to target twelve year olds on TikTok, then the reality yep. is is that you don't need anything else really. And then you've got LinkedIn from a professional standpoint. But then, yep. uh, but then the the thing that i found absolutely amazing that he said to me like this is a guy who's got thousands of subscribers and and you know he does a great deal of content he goes do you know 35% of my views come from smart tvs yeah. on youtube now so i know no i said to him i don't like the youtube app on my tv i think it's clunky and shit i have youtube tv which is like all the channels and whatever and i said if they could if they could convert the app for YouTube, normal YouTube to you, like they won on YouTube TV. So I went on there last night 
And it's pretty much the same now. It's much yeah. more user friendly. It's oh, easier. It. You know, it's it's way easier to use because it's been so long since I'd been on there. And that is so important because I sit there on my phone at night and I watch YouTube. I don't watch the shorts. I don't watch any. I watch YouTube on a topic that ultimately, it makes me feel better about myself that I'm not scrolling through shit, okay, that I might be doing something more productive. But where I'm going- speak my language. The only, <laughs> thing, the only thing I watch on my TV is YouTube. Like, oh, there you go. Outside of there you sports go. and stuff like that. But uh, like I- I basically watch YouTube videos on my TV like they are normal television channels. Like, yeah, exactly. um, and then I go to the streaming platforms for all the the shows that I want. So all the, you know, I go to Netflix for the the TV show that I want or whatever. Um, and so I'm watching Peaky Blinders right now. So I'm going to Netflix. I'm watching Peaky Blinders. And so, um, and but outside of that, I'm just on YouTube and I'm finding all the tips or I'm watching you know videos that I really f- find enjoyable on there. Which is, I thought that app has always been pretty good. Um, so, but I've also never had the YouTube TV app, so I wouldn't know. And that sort of leads me to the next part of all of this. You've got shorts and the reels. Like and then you've got YouTube and and the SEO static content is basically gone or or leaving us right. Well, and that's kind of what I want to get into on the second part of this when it comes to AI and SEO. So we talked about um, the AI and how that's infecting going to be affecting search results and now how you can capitalize on that with your advertising and everything like that. When you run these ads, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have to have a place to put them. Like you're gonna they're gonna click on your ad on Google and they're gonna go somewhere. Um, they got to go basically to your website um, from that standpoint. One of the big things that just happened recently when it comes to a Google update is they started encouraging, not encouraging, but they were basically blackballing um, any websites that were using blatant AI content on their website. Right. Um, so if you were basically, so say for our example, say we're going into Tennessee and we just used AI, we used ChatGPT to just bombard right, yeah. our entire website with content about Tennessee real estate uh, and just kind of fill all the neighborhoods out, everything like that. They would blackball you. Um, basically, they would downrank your your pages because they how weren't do you, how do they How content. do they know that? How do they, they know they that? They just, mate? through their algorithm and stuff like that, they're able to kind of, there's AI detections and stuff like that that, that are pretty good. Because uh, like, tell- schools, cause schools exactly. use that stuff. Schools like, use like, that stuff now. I just don't know how, how. Like, is it a certain script that is used? I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah it's yeah, just, yeah. It, there's certain formats and I, I, I it's above my payroll. All, all I know is that they were able to do that. They were able to blackball a bunch of sites um, and, and pages and stuff like that that were using blatant AI um, to generate all their yeah. copy on their website yeah. and all their content on the website. Now, in the verbiage that they just came out with, they basically took that verbiage out. They said, good content is good content. Um, and that's verbatim what they said. So it doesn't matter at that point. And everyone's kind of opened their eyes and they're like, so it doesn't matter. Good content could come from AI, right? Like, and they just didn't answer. And so that was kind of the whole, like, we're not saying to do it, but you could do it. So a bunch of people started testing it and they started testing basically funneling a bunch of uh, content, filler content, not the main bulk of their pages or anything like that, but all the subsidiary pages that they basically wanted to link in. They started having ChatGPT write it uh, and funnel it, and they saw all their uh, organic traffic spike. And Mm -hmm. so it's one of those things where now, if you're a realtor in a specific area and you have a website and you're struggling to make content and keep it up to date, because that's one of the big things you're saying is like uh, static content is dead. Um, static content is a lot of website content. A lot of the content on website, and we're, we're guilty of this more than anybody else as well, where some of the website content that we have on there has been living on there for five, six, seven, eight years. Absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's been the same copy. It's the last thing. If you said to me that, uh, Ben, one of your tasks this week is to rewrite the copy on your website, I'd be like, fuck you. Yeah, really? exactly. But what people yeah. are doing is they're basically having ChatGPT rewrite that website content every couple months now. and re Because Google likes that. Google likes uh, new and updated content. Uh, content. And so instead of doing the entire website, they're saying, hey, go rewrite this page or hey, go write, re- rewrite the this paragraph on the homepage and stuff like right. that. And then they're funneling that into it and it's working. And then they're also building new pages. So if you're a realtor and you're thinking, hey, I can't write a page for every single community in San Diego. There's just yep. no possible way I can do it. But guess who could? ChatGPT. ChatGPT could then go scour for all the Rancho Bernardo neighborhoods and all the golf courses in the local area and all the homes around it. And they could write re- uh, reviews about the, all the golf courses and they could do all those and you could publish those on your website. And now all of a sudden you have links, you have a, a vast a, a vast portfolio of pages on your website now that you didn't have 
maybe you have 50 new pages, which is amazing. They're all linking to your internal pages all over the place about selling real estate or buying real estate or all that stuff. So now you're creating more link authority inside of your uh, website. And you're basically able to climb the rankings organically because you're using ChatGPT. I know right. this sounds difficult and I know this sounds probably super cumbersome. But what I'm saying is if you could, you know, go to someone to hire someone who's a, you know, oh, an AI yeah. person, or if you just start playing with it with little things when it comes to your website and using it to update stuff, maybe you have an assistant and say, hey, go to this page. I want you to update this with, you know, chat GPT content. And then I want you to keep this the same and stuff like that. Like that's, that's something where, that you could get a virtual assistant around. Someone 100%. just starting doing like with like generating that stuff. Yeah, a hundred percent. I just want to let people know that this is again on the horizon and something that you can um, capitalize on of using chat GPT and the copywriters where you're not actually going to get harmed from a Google's perspective anymore because Google is so in tune with AI and they know that people are using it and they're, you know, people are kind of going after it. And they're also trying to sell their own AI at this point. Why would you then bash people who use the AI copywriting generating tools um, to then not like you, you have to let them use it if you're, if you're going to be promoting your own AI at that point. So um, it's a really cool new feature that like could help you climb SEO rankings really easily. Um, you could use it for videos like we talked about where it's video titles. We use it for a lot of our video stuff. Uh, I use it as like a brainstorming tool. So I, I usually for every video uh, that we put out, I say create 20 YouTube titles uh, inside of ChatGPT um, for this video. Do you, that's upload, about X. do you upload the transcription of these? No, into I, basically, it no? I basically give a synopsis of what the video is about um, right. and because I'm the one editing it and stuff like that. So I give a synopsis about what the video is about. And then I say create 20 YouTube titles. I could upload the entire transcript. That is something I could do, um, but I just don't do it that way. I just get, I know what the vi each video is about. I listen to it uh, while I'm editing it. And then I just uh, type it in and then they create 20 YouTube titles. And then I just take pieces of them. So I'm like, okay, that title's cool. Like that piece is cool. And then I kind of mash them all together and create my perfect title. So again, I'm not using um, ChatGPT per se because uh, the final product is never chat GPT, but it's always like pieces of it. Like I'm like, oh, I like that they use that word. I wouldn't have thought of that word. And so I'll, I'll put that in there. So um, I, I think there's a lot of cool things when it comes to AI and SEO. And I would say um, this is probably the most exciting time, I would say, where you're going to see a lot of fluctu fluctuation uh, when it comes to organic rankings in a long, long time. So if, if you guys have been saying, you know, SEO is dead or, you know, there's all these people trying to always sell you SEO strategies and everything like that. This is probably one of the the most exciting times when it comes to being able to jump competitors uh, yeah. based on the AI tools that are out there and the shift that they're doing in the algorithm right now. Um, I haven't seen this um, time where you can kind of game the system since like probably like 2010, 2011 time. Wow. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, Chris is just adding more pressure to himself to have to execute for us at Huggles Auctions. But I was, anyway, I was I was already thinking of like how many pages do we have to create. I was it was, it was terrible. Ah, <laughs> so. uh, there you go. But oh, Calista's doing an AI play. MBA, so we're yeah, good. There, <laughs> go. there we go. There we go. She's all over it. She's all over it. <laughs> All right, team, a little bit of AI, a little bit of SEO, a little bit of stuff that if you have no idea about, we've completely lost you, but that's fine. It's still stuff you need to know. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. So about 75% of our audience hasn't liked, followed, or subscribed to our podcast. It would mean the world to us, and it would help this podcast more than you know to expand our reach if you were to like, follow, or subscribe on any of the platforms that you're watching or listening on. Thanks again.